Uh, so today, uh, we're going to be doing a uh, presentation and a talk about uh, migrating from MySQL to MySQL with Vitesse. Um, I had intended to do a little demo uh, at the end. I made some assumptions about the networking that turned out to be not true. So I'm not sure if that'll work, but I'll try the best. Uh, I'll talk through the examples and sort of like talking about using a canary to make sure that our risk is low. Really, I want to take the focus here of, you know, you've got an application, this is the application that's, you know, your core business. How do we really reduce that risk to be able to, to get to Vitesse? Uh, I'll sort of preface that by giving a very brief introduction about Vitesse for those who are not familiar. And I'll ask for a show of hands, who's not familiar with Vitesse? All right, so I was, uh, I was justified in, in adding the slide. That's about 50%. So um, Vitesse, uh, in, in summary, is a cloud-native database. So uh, Vitesse allows you to operate uh, essentially MySQL, and we'll get to that in a second, uh, in a very Kubernetes-like way. So traditionally, with, with monolithic databases, you, you treat them like monoliths, and you kind of tend to them individually, like they're pets rather than like they're cattle. And so Vitesse allows you to, to not have to have those databases to the side as you move to, to Kubernetes. You can bring them with you, and you can manage your MySQL in a very similar way. Um, Vitesse, uh, it, Project Origin came out of YouTube, actually, uh, and being part of Google, uh, also where Kubernetes came from. That's sort of where some of that synergy comes from. But one of the goals of Vitesse was to allow you to also horizontally scale MySQL so that you can achieve massive scalability. As you need to add capacity to your MySQL servers, you know, in a traditional monolithic way, you would have uh, scaled up. Now you can scale out as well by horizontally adding nodes. Uh, it also provides a level of orchestration around MySQL so that you can have high availability. So it uses uh, what, what we recommend, semi-synchronous replication. So if you, as you make a modification uh, through your application, make sure that at least a couple of the nodes have copies of the data so that you can have recovery. And finally, uh, the last point is that it's fairly easy to migrate into Vitesse because to your applications, it looks like it's MySQL, and it is based on MySQL, and we'll describe that in just a couple of slides forward when we go into architecture. Uh, Vitesse recently graduated uh, as a, a CNCF project. It's the eighth project to be able to do that, so that's something that we're very excited uh, on. There's, there's a couple of maintainers in the room. Uh, Vitesse has a lot of adoption in terms of uh, where these contributors come from and how many individual people are helping drive Vitesse forward. The project, as I said, started in YouTube in 2010, became a CNCF project in 2018, and it graduated just in the last month. So some of the key adopters, uh, if you saw this morning's keynote, uh, one of the really interesting ones is, is how Slack is using uh, Vitesse. They actually have a talk on right now, so thank you for, for joining me. Uh, also, JD is the largest known uh, cluster that we know of of Vitesse, where they're running 35 million queries per second peak. This is the architecture of Vitesse, and uh, I think this slide will be really interesting as we go through the examples today. Uh, on, the, on the very far side, you can see this is your application, and your application can be anything. Anything that has a MySQL connector or MySQL driver and uh, wants to be able to, to speak to MySQL, it can speak to Vitesse, because Vitesse speaks the MySQL protocol. Or rather, the, the component of Vitesse that, that presents uh, this MySQL view of the world to your application is something called VTGate. So VTGate uh, is a stateless proxy that can do routing to make sure that you're connected to the correct MySQL server to be able to retrieve that data that you needed to access. It can also do other features, such as if it had to access more than one MySQL server underneath, it can scatter gather and it can join those results together. So uh, many, but not all, of the MySQL queries that you could execute on regular MySQL, you can execute in Vitesse as well. So things like joins and transactions are, are supported. So uh, beneath VTGate, uh, we have our tablets. Tablets is the Vitesse terminology to say this is a combination of a VT tablet process and a MySQL server. Vitesse actually does use MySQL under the hood to be able to store data, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, MySQL, uh, you know, it's, it's a very stable product with a lot of history, and actually its performance on a single node basis is very good. It's just that it doesn't allow you to scale horizontally, and this is where Vitesse comes in 
and helps you be able to do that. So you can have many tablet servers, many VT gate servers, and your application just sees a single view of the world where it sees a single database uh, that it's used to connecting to. It doesn't have to know this detail. It's sort of under the, under the covers, which is why we have this line that uh, delineates between your application and with Vitesse. Okay, some details not shown here, but, but also worth knowing. Uh, Vitesse natively supports the concept of a cell or a data center, so you can have uh, some of your uh, tablets located in GCP and some other ones located in AWS. Uh, in the YouTube case, they had many data centers around the world, and they used Vitesse to be able to manage this. Uh, at a simple level, I don't want you to think of Vitesse as, as VTGate. Uh, you know, routing and, and being a proxy is part of it, but Vitesse is really an orchestration system that helps manage these MySQL servers, and as I said, allows you to not treat them like pets. So if you do have a failure, you can use Vitesse to be able to help you recover and have uh, another node replace that in a very cloud-like, Kubernetes-like way. Okay, any questions so far about the architecture? Yeah. Do you have any plans to support any other uh, RD, RDBMSs like Postgres? Yeah, that's a great question. So I'll, I'll repeat the question. Uh, do we have any plans to support other databases? You know, in the case of YouTube, they use MySQL. Uh, so that's how Vitesse started. But Vitesse is fairly agnostic. So we do have, uh, we do have ideas and we do have plans, but, but we're not currently implementing it. It'll, it'll come in the future. We'd love to support Postgres. We think it's a great idea. Does the uh, VT tablet make sure the shards are still in sync with the master? Does the VT tablet make sure the shards are in sync with the master? Uh, I will throw in a level of detail that I didn't show, but is on my, my slide. The metadata is stored in something we call a topology server. And both the tablets and the VT gates can connect to the, the, uh, the topology server, which is your choice of etcd, which is the most common these days, or, or Zookeeper or console, to, to be able to store that state information. It's not actually connected to as part of the active uh, query serving path, but this is where the metadata resides to, to kind of keep that, that routing information. Does VT gate ever connect directly to MySQL? No, it, it accesses via the tablet. And actually, a detail we've not shown here is that VT gate to VT tablet is a gRPC protocol. And then it converts it back to MySQL D here. Your application, you know, in most common usage these days, people do connect via the MySQL protocol, but there's also a gRPC protocol directly to VT gate as well. The underlying storage is MySQL D. Yeah, so you can choose your choice of InnoDB, which is the most common, or uh, we have some users that have uh, used TokuDB. Uh, it's really up to you. Uh, I think in the future, we'll see some RocksDB adoption as well. Uh, it's fairly agnostic in how it operates there. Um, I don't know if I called your question, but I'll try <laughs> and, and tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, could you connect directly to, to, uh, to the VT tablet or connect directly to the VT gate with gRPC? V yeah, you can connect directly with gRPC to the VT gate. That's officially, That's officially supported, yeah. That was the original way that it actually operated inside YouTube. And there are drivers for uh, Java, PHP, and Python that are gRPC based uh, to the VT gate. I would prefer MySQL, to, to be honest. There are just a couple of differences in features, but there's so many connectors that are available for MySQL that it's just easier for your application to be able to, to figure that out and debug. Yep. Last question. Yep. How would this interact with something like Google Cloud SQL? Or what? Yeah, so how would this interact with something like Google Cloud SQL? That is a great question. Uh, in my next slide, as we get into the migration, uh, it is possible to be able to do a Google Cloud SQL migration using the same methodology that I'm describing today. Um, the VT tablet, a detail I'm not showing that I'll show in that sort of next slide forward, is it can actually connect to an external MySQL. 
So you could actually use Vitess with your instances managed by uh, Cloud SQL, but typically people opt for the fully Vitess uh, managed style as it you know, does those failovers for you and it's just a little bit nicer. Um, I did say last question, okay, one more. Aurora, yeah, we actually released a benchmark at the company I work for Planet Scale that showed that if you put Vitesse on top of Aurora, you can horizontally scale Aurora. And that's the real value add is it doesn't horizontally scale itself. And we had just massive numbers, I think 16 million TPCC tra transactions per second, uh, per minute, <laughs> per minute, thank you, as a result of that. Yeah, I would recommend that you use both parts, but you could just use one part. You could just use the layer above with the VT gate, not the management. Okay, so let's talk about what we're gonna be getting up to today. Uh, we're gonna be migrating uh, from a legacy, legacy is a bad word, but from a, a monolith MySQL server uh, to Vitesse. Monolith is a bad word also, okay. From a MySQL server to Vitesse. And we wanna make sure that we reduce our risk as much as possible, right? We wanna make sure that you know, we know our queries are compatible with Vitesse, our latencies don't go up, and we wanna be able to use a really responsible ops process, to, which is to be able to use a canary to be able to get there. And you can do this with Vitesse. You can't do this with all database migrations, right? It's fairly hard to be able to do that, but you can do this with Vitesse. So um, let's talk about these three, three problems. Um, first, um, how will we, we test our queries to know that they're compatible with Vitesse? Um, I think it's obviously best to start this with dev and QA. Maybe you have a test suite, maybe you can validate this. But I'm always still cautious when we get to production that we have to validate this in production. Sometimes you have applications where users can click on buttons in a certain sequence, and that's not covered by your test suite, or that generates a query that's really special. And so I wanna be able to validate that in production. And I wanna know that it's able to execute in Vitesse as it did in MySQL. Um, there's one thing to note about the, the architecture that we have uh, for uh, Vitesse, that it's got that VT gate layer. It adds an extra network hop. And actually frequently you'll even put a load balance in front of those VT gates so you can balance between them. And that would be two extra network hops. So you have to make sure that this doesn't impact our application in a negative way, right? So, an easy back of napkin math way of doing this is project about a millisecond or two per, per query that is going to be added by Vitesse. And so your application, you know, in the specific case that it uses like row at a time processing with n plus one, I think it could see that it gets a regression. Uh, it's not that easy to say yes or no. Some applications actually see an improvement because in the MySQL case, they were just so overloaded that queries were taking longer. When they move to Vitesse, VTGate has some other nice features like connection pooling that could actually lead to an improvement. But anyway, if we want to be responsible, we want to be able to test this and make sure that this doesn't impact our app. And you want to fix these in your app anyway if there are N plus one issues. If they're not fixable, then maybe you might have to design the app a little bit different to use threads to be able to access it in parallel. And then as we validate these things, we want to make sure that we're able to back out and I said Vitesse is, is exceptionally good at this, that we're able to operate uh, with the ability to say, no, you know, this looked like it was doing well in QA, it looked like it was doing well in dev, but we're seeing some sort of elevated query latencies or some sort of query errors. We wanna be able to take a step back and move back to our previous infrastructure. And so uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it through the architecture. So I'll revisit this slide for a second and say this is a fully deployed Vitesse where we've got our VT gate and we've got our tablets that are managed by, by Vitesse. And then off to the side, we've got our topology server and our VTCTL, which is the D, which is the management, I didn't mention that. This is our canary deployment model. This is how we get started with Vitesse under this model. So we have our application, which mostly connects to the existing MySQL server. And then we have Vitesse with VT gate to the side. We have to modify our application you know, maybe we're able to do this where we can tag ourselves as a particular user to say, rather than going to the regular MySQL server, you go to VTGate. Or maybe we just modify one application server to be able to do this. And then we start ramping up the traffic, right? So we start with 95% or 99% going to the existing MySQL server. And then we have a small percentage of traffic that we route to the VTGate server. 
which then connects to a VT tablet, and the VT tablet is in a special mode that we call externally managed MySQL. This works great, and it works great because VT gate itself is stateless. It's not storing any of the data. You can insert and update and select data from each one of these access paths, and you'll be able to see it in the other location. This is the first step, and this, uh, this confirms to us in, in our you know, things that we want to validate that the query latency is going to be okay for our application, and the queries that we're hoping to support are supported as well. So as we boost up our confidence, uh, we're going to increase this percentage from 5% to 100%. That's, that's the end goal. And we have to get to 100% before we can start the next level, which is to add additional VT tablets that are managed by Vitesse. Okay. Um, so this is where we want to get to. This is our phase two of our migration, where we want to say that there's no direct access to MySQL. Everything goes through a VT gate. And the VT gate is the router. So as we move into to sharded workloads or as we have multiple key spaces to use Vitesse terminology, we have to make sure that everyone is accessing a VT gate so that it gets routed, the query gets routed to the right location. So if they were connecting to regular MySQL and I start moving a table, well, MySQL is not going to understand that that's now on another server. So this is the, the prerequisite to get to. Uh, when we get to this point, then we can add a new tablet. And we can add a, a Vitesse tablet with MySQL D. And so far, this tablet is not storing any information. But we could either start creating new tables in that location, or we could copy the data from the existing MySQL server to our Vitesse tablet. And this is really cool, because this, uh, it's a feature we call table migration. It can actually happen online. So it starts copying from the existing MySQL server without blocking reads, without blocking writes. It just happens in the background. And then when it's finished copying, you know, it could be a several gigabyte table, uh, then you can fail over and you can say VT gate, start looking to my Vitesse tablet, don't look at my existing MySQL server. So let's talk a little bit about table migration, what it means. Uh, it's also currently called vertical split clone inside uh, some of the documentation for Vitesse. We do plan to entirely uh, rename this uh, to call it a uh, table migration. Uh, it allows you to uh, move, you know, as I said, online. Online means that it doesn't block reads or it doesn't block writes. It's just going to block for a couple of seconds at the very last stage when you want to uh, do that final transition. Uh, it does have some requirements to be able to do this. On the MySQL server, most of these requirements are on the MySQL side, not on the Vitesse side. These are not the defaults. But actually, in the case of Google Cloud SQL, I think they are the defaults. So uh, it should be able to do, for that question I had earlier, a migration from Cloud SQL uh, to Vitesse using this methodology. In most cases, I think you'd be pretty safe to change these defaults on a MySQL server. Uh, they are, I think, in many cases, uh, the defaults with MySQL 8.0 and above. Uh, that, that Vitesse requires. So MySQL is moving in that direction anyway. You just need to, to turn on some of these things a little bit earlier. Okay, so let's, let's talk about completion. So as we get to the end of, of the copy, what happens now? We have everything pointing to, to the uh, VT gate, which means that it'll effectively route to know that it should go to the, to the existing MySQL server if we have a legacy table, uh, or we can go to the new question. Vitesse officially recommends UTF-8. Uh, let me just double check on uh, what our wording is for our <laughs> other character sets. I would say it's discouraged, but Sugu might have another wording. Yeah, so um, the only character set that we unofficially allow is Latin. Um, anything else uh, is questionable. The main reason is because of how uh, the query has to escape your strings. So if you try something other than uh, UT, yeah, other than a UTF-8 based character set or a Latin, uh, it may not work. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So we had, we get to the completion, 
And then we end up, I'm just going to sort of shuffle this as, uh, to the side so you can kind of see what it, it looks like close to that original architecture diagram that we showed where you had uh, your MySQL uh, or your applications, your VTGate, and then your tablets. Now we're kind of moving into that area where we have VTGate uh, pointing to the, to the uh, new tablets or pointing to the old tablet that points to the existing MySQL server. So uh, we end up in this position where we can have uh, just the old tables in MySQL and any new table if we want to, we can create it in this, this new location. So our setup, uh, let's, let's throw in some details to, to be able to you know, make it referenceable. Uh, legacy MySQL is, is using one key space and we use the terminology that's externally managed key space by Vitesse. Uh, this is the same technology that allows you to, to you know, use the Aurora case where it's managed by Aurora, but we put Vitesse on top of it to, to horizontally scale it. And then we have a single unsharded key space that is our new infrastructure. Uh, Vitesse supports both sharded and unsharded key spaces. Uh, just to throw in a detail now, if you do move into sharded, there's just a few uh, less queries that are supported. Uh, as sometimes it's difficult to be able to figure out where to access the data from. So uh, for the simple case, uh, we went with the uncharted key space. And uh, then uh, from, from there, uh, we're able to sort of deploy additional key spaces, additional tables. Um, it's recommended to keep, uh, when you kind of shard systems, it's recommended to keep your updates to be within an, an individual uh, key space in an individual shard. Uh, rather than having to update things that are in many places. Vitesse does support the ability to do this. It can do a two-phase commit, but it tends to be slower to be able to do that. Um, so at this point, uh, I was going to attempt a demo, but as I said, I do know that there are problems, and so I'll just double check my clock as well. I'm at 25 minutes. I think it might be better to take questions instead, because it, it might break. Uh, and I'll get Sugo up on stage to take the questions as well. VT gates to state of proxies, yes. Suppose I have a cluster with three VT gates in front. Yeah. Now, my connect string from app server will list out all three. Yeah, so that's a great question. So does your application have three? Uh, typically, not shown in my, my diagram, people put a load balancer in front of the, the three as an easy way to do it. Yeah, and that way you only have to have one point to be able to do that. Yeah, the, they, they won't sort of reroute traffic to the other nodes as they get busy. I mean, they just speak the MySQL protocol, so it doesn't support that native, natively. Some drivers, though, for example, JDBC, does have the ability to like, list a set of uh, servers. And so in that case, you could potentially list all of them. But I, I would say most people do put a load balancer as well. I'll let you answer that one. Yeah. So the question is, uh, what kind of support do we have for uh, change data capture? That's a feature that I've been working on for over the last one year. Uh, it's called vReplication. And uh, it's about a couple of weeks away from completion. Uh, it helps you. It does a whole bunch of things, including what we call materialization. You can basically point at a table and say, I want to materialize this table using the select query. And then it will just materialize the entire thing into another uh, key space, basically project it anywhere you like. That same underlying feature is also used where you can basically, uh, from the outside, tell Vitesse, OK, I want to subscribe to all changes. And it will just push them to you uh, through either gRPC. And we are also going to do the MySQL protocol. Yeah. All right, I'll take this one next. The question is, do you have any requirements on table structure in terms I'll of primary keys? I'll let you answer that keys? one first. <laughs> OK. Yeah. So the one very specific uh, 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 thing that we have about uh, Vitesse is there is no requirement about, there is, there, is, there is no restriction about which sharding key you use for your table versus what primary key the table has. As a matter of fact, most workloads uh, are, uh, work better that way because uh, uh, enforcing that the sharding key is part of the primary key 
uh, is a huge restriction in terms of your ability to group related data that has to be together. So that's, uh, I don't know if that's, that was your underlying question. In that case, yes, that thing we explicitly allow. Yeah, I'll just say a couple of notes. Vitesse supports all data types that MySQL does. It does not recommend that you use a decimal data type as part of the sharding key or primary key, but otherwise it should be fine. The, yeah. the replication does that can allow you to connect uh, a separate MySQL server as a slave, or would that, would that not be facilitated with something like that? So the question is, uh, does V replication uh, help with MySQL replication overall? Is, I don't know if... Or, or would it be possible? Kind of, kind of with CDC capture, we have tools that... Yes, yeah. MySQL is it theoretically possible to do that? Uh, yes, but uh, if you ask me, MySQL replication as a master replica situation is pretty good and pretty efficient, so there's no need to get in between there. But what it does not do is if you want to apply transformations and if you actually want to, the target uh, to be slightly different, like for example, you want to filter only some rows or you want to do aggregation on the fly, so those kinds of things MySQL replication will not do. In that case, we use uh, Vitesse for it. But theoretically, yes, Vitesse can, is capable because it subs that, uh, that's exactly how it works. It subscribes to the bin logs and then uh, copies the data. I'll just say a little bit of detail. So um, when you've got a sharded system, every system has its own binary logs. So if you wanted to get a combined view of that, uh, you can get that with Vitesse. You can, you can do a vStream. Yeah, 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 so that's the, that's the main purpose of uh, but replication. The, the API that we expose for that is gRPC. It's not back to MySQL protocol. But I actually think that's more useful. Yeah. We will support yeah. MySQL also. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I know you mentioned just at a simplicity, this is a simple key space. Uh, do you have any best practices for like, like sharp key spaces? And you said there's certain queries that support them, uh, but do you need anything else like patches? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the question is, uh, uh, we recommend uh, splitting data out into, uh, into smaller parts. How is that going to affect my ability to run uh, various queries? I don't know, is that a good way to restate your question? Yeah. Where are pitfalls? What is the best practice? Yeah. So, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. start. Yeah. Um, best practices, we really recommend that you aim for 250 gig shards, but we don't enforce it. And it, it's really just because we want failover and recovery to be fast. That's kind of the assumption that we're making in the design of the, the system. Um, typically, if you are sharding because you're a multi-tenant SAS, uh, you could shard by the tenant ID, but sometimes if you have a real lopsided distribution between your tenants, uh, if your tenant has a tenant ID, that can be the better candidate to be able to, to do it. Yeah, so, and also in the long run, uh, as in that's actually our focus for Vitesse, uh, until we reach this goal is to make it fully compatible with MySQL. I mean, our lofty goal is to make it a drop-in replacement. Are, so queries that don't work today will pro most likely start working in a few months from now. Um, and just one more thing. That yeah. There is a MySQL compatibility page on the, the Vitesse documentation, which is a good starting point to see what's not supported. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I let me answer too, that yeah. because I actually dealt with that problem. <laughs> so uh, the question is, uh, how do you do uh, pagina pagination using Vitesse in a sharded environment? So it depends a lot on how your data is organized. Um, so the, uh, a bunch of people actually came with the impression that pagination works one shard at a time, right? So if your uh, data is ordered in such a way that you scan within a shard, and then go to the next shard, and then go to the next shard. So that is actually not the recommended way because organizing your data is a guaranteed way to uh, end up with hot shards because popular items tend to be within one. 
So the way that we recommend you do it with Vitesse is actually spread it out semi pseudo randomly into all shards. And then uh, when you paginate, what Vitesse will do is let's say select limit 100, right? So it'll actually fetch 100 from each shard and then cut off as needed. So it feels a little inefficient, but it is still acceptable because the work is distributed. But pagination has a problem, especially if you use a limit query with uh, offset and uh, uh, count, is it degrades over time. Like if you're, if you're yeah. paginating 10,000 pages, you're going to be in trouble, and that's a MySQL limitation. So what people have done in that case is actually uh, the token idea that you talked about, which is actually remember the last value that you fetched, and use a greater than that value and just use a limit clause. So that is what people have used so yep. far. I'm uh, gonna take a question here, yeah. and then the one off behind straight after, sir. Um, how does the test interact or does not interact with your organization with products like Proxy SQL or MySQL Administrator? Um, can you end or just wonder if you have Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. So yeah. uh, pro Proxy SQL, uh, it does some of the some, same functionality, uh, but sort of less in the sharding use case. And uh, with Orchestrator, uh, we have integration with Orchestrator, and there's, there's many people that actually use Orchestrator and the test together. And they use Ghost also for schema deployment. Yep. Yeah. No one behind? Um, yeah, so if you're, uh, have, how does it work with asset transactions? So if your update is within a shard, then it's basically just routing to, to MySQL and it is a transaction. If it is across shard boundaries, then you can enable two-phase commit to be able to, and Vitesse will kind of maintain that log of the operations to be able to survive with recovery. Uh, we typically recommend that you try and model things so that you're in the first camp, not the second camp, as it's a performance uh, degradation to do that. And two PC transactions are not 100% acid. The isolation level is not repeatable read. It will degrade down to uh, read committed. Read committed, yeah. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Okay, I'm gonna take more of the back, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, you, yeah. That's how you migrate. Yeah, that's how you migrate, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the topology server, does it have state that you need to worry about? Yeah, it keeps the topology information, but you can recover it if you were to lose it. It's sort of like the routing dictionary. Yeah, you can also uh, manually rebuild it in the worst case scenario, just by issuing, they are just key space and shard information, which yeah. you can manually recreate. Yeah, so just by philosophy, Vitesse supports, uh, Console, etcd, and Zookeeper, but you could potentially add others. And you know, in many deployments these days, people have chosen one of these technologies. It integrates nicely that you don't have to pick a new one. Uh, I'll get this one and then you. Okay. In the MySQL compatible implementation, um, what's the best strategy for backups or snapshots? <laughs> Is it just like uh, it's, so how do we do backups is the, is the question. And it's very similar to how you did backups with regular MySQL, only Vitesse kind of manages that for you with a plugin system. So uh, some of our users use extra backup as the plugin, and some of them use the shutdown replica and then backup as a, as a method. And, and both work uh, fairly well, and it's, it's kind of like on a, on a per tablet basis that it will back those up for you. I don't believe we currently do, no. but it's, yeah. it's technically possible that we might in the future. Just, just from a, um, I, I don't wanna walk, walk down this path too much, just from a uh, philosophical perspective, when it was operating at YouTube, uh, often it used local storage, and it just had many replicas. And so uh, that works well when you've got a lot of read traffic. Uh, we know a lot of users do use the, the cloud-provided network storage, but uh, if, if you do have many copies, it is better to use locally. I don't know if there's That's, a better way to... I'm going to talk about yeah. those trade-offs in my talk later. Okay. <laughs> but a uh, uh, couple of points about the, uh, the backup is, if you're using uh, hosted cloud storage, there is no need for Vitesse to do anything for you because they are doing the backup and restore 
for you. So in, that is the case where you run Vitesse in externally managed mode, where you use it mainly for uh, query routing. Uh, and uh, if you want to switch over to Vitesse to do the backup and restore, it means that you, uh, you don't want to rely on the cloud's method of backup and restore. Right. Does the backup render? Uh, does the backup uh, render? Uh, no, I don't think so. I th I believe it just uh, uh, it just stores it to uh, whatever. There's an interface you can either say mounted volume or S3 or uh, uh, I don't know. There was one more, one other uh, adapter that we have for. Uh, it saves it there and then it knows how to go back to it. it it's right. not Kubernetes dependent. I, I think the, the, uh, the answer why it's not Kubernetes dependent is because there are people who run Vitesse outside of Kubernetes. Oh. So the Vitesse code itself has nothing yeah. that, uh, that depends on Kubernetes by itself. Oh, the, the guy at the back who had his hand before? One. Uh, all right. OK. Oh, OK. How does the scale out happen? How, how does the scale out happen? It happens uh, gradually over time, and when you know, for the scale out happens by you resharding. Uh, you start with one instance, and then you say like the first step that you talked about, uh, talked about is migrate tables out into another VT tablet. So as you do that scale out, your traffic is growing, so you deploy more VT gates, and then afterwards what you will do is you'll start resharding your data, uh, and as you reshard you'll scale out even more VT gates, and uh, then you'll start adding cells. Essentially, like YouTube, we, start, we had one database that we called the main DB, and uh, by the time I left, uh, we had tens of thousands of nodes. So it was all slowly grown over time, adding more data centers, more VT gates, and yeah. Okay, I, uh, I don't know if we're gonna get- We're way out of time. We're way out of time. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, Sorry, you can you catch can, us outside. You can catch us yeah. uh, once you're- Thank you, everyone.